Hi gang, I am so excited that you guys have done so well. I hope that you were able to see that it's small changes that make a big difference. Just being more aware of your feelings for emotional eating, just drinking some extra water, adding an extra uh, serving of vegetables, uh, being able to uh, change out just small ingredients like the plain Greek yogurt instead of sour cream. Just the small things consistent over time. That's what force is all about, focusing on real consistent effort. Now I know that I had said that I was going to talk to all of you guys who have picky eaters. Here's the deal. Here is Scooter's story. Scooter is what was labeled as a picky eater. Now when I mean picky eater, I mean mac and cheese, no. Potatoes, no. Meat, no. Um, he doesn't like apples or bananas or grapes. Uh, he was super, super picky. In fact, it was at 18 months, and I remember, I actually have it on video, where I fed him his last serving serving of vegetables as pureed peas. And he fought me and fought me, and I got the whole entire jar down. And then he spit it up. And that was at 18 months. And from 18 months until three years, we tried desperately to get him to eat, and it just was not working. And we even, under the direction of the pediatrician, we told him he had to eat a pea, a carrot, a piece of corn, or a green bean. Just one of those before he was able to eat anything else because we wanted him to understand that nutrition was important. Because all that time before, we were making like smoothies with hidden stuff in them, you know, using um, uh, Jessica Seinfeld's Deceptively Delicious book. So he was getting some nutrition, but it was all secret. And I hated that. Scooter went from Friday morning until Sunday morning. We fed him Pedialyte at the time. We gave him an ounce every hour as directed by the pediatrician, but he was not allowed to eat anything else until he tried one of those, just one. Not even a serving of, and not even all of them, but just a carrot, a little piece of carrot, a piece of corn, a little pea or a green bean, one of those. And he went, he went all 72 hours without eating anything just surviving on the little bit of pea light that we gave him to keep his energy up. Sunday morning, Cameron put the piece of corn in Scooter's mouth and he swallowed it. And then he asked if he could have some pancakes and I said yes. And then he went immediately, turned around and threw it up. He threw up the piece of corn. So when you talk about a picky eater, I have a picky eater. What I understand now is that he's not necessarily picky, but I was serving him foods that he didn't like based on what I thought he should like as a kid. You see, Scooter's favorite fruit is not apples, bananas, or grapes, it's grapefruit. And Scooter's favorite meat isn't chicken or turkey, it's roast beef and salmon. So he has some different things that he likes that are, are pleasing to his palate. Um, the reason why I realized this was because we were at a restaurant and Andy grabbed a black olive and I said, oh, Andy, I don't know, you just might not like it because none of us like black olives. Well, she put that in her mouth and she's like, oh my gosh, this is so yummy. Can I have some more? And she ate a whole entire bowl full of black olives. She grabbed it off of our, our uh, friend's plate. She never would have had a black olive had it not been for that incident. And it, that's when it hit me that I was serving my kids the foods I thought that they should like because based on what I liked. So number one tip for those who have picky eaters, don't limit what you think that they will or won't like. Give them everything. Let them try it. Scooter loves lemon and lime in his water. He doesn't like juice, but he likes lemon or lime in his water. So give them a variety of things that you might not even find appealing. They might. Number two was that I was done being a all day cook. And when I talk to parents who say my kid is a picky eater, I ask them, well, what did your kid eat yesterday? And they go through all the things the kid ate yesterday. And I look at them and say, you don't have a picky eater. You have a smart kid. Because if you're, go you're going to give them the things that they want, if you're going to give them the mac and cheese and the hot dogs and the pizza, if they're going to get gummy bears and fruit roll-ups and snacks in between, they're going to hold out until you give in and give them that stuff. And I get a lot of flack for this, but my kids went to bed hungry several nights. I made dinner and I gave it to them. And they needed to eat one bite before they left the table of everything. And if they didn't, they had to sit there at the table. And several nights my kids sat at the table 
until it was time for bed. And then they went to bed. And the next morning, I served them the breakfast meal. I didn't serve them the dinner meal, I served them the breakfast meal. But you better believe that that breakfast was awesome. That's how Scooter and Annie started to like oatmeal and eggs because they would go the night without eating dinner. And then the next breakfast, I said, you know what? I know you didn't have dinner, so I'm going to make sure you have something super awesome and yummy. And so I started serving oatmeal and eggs, and they were hungry, and they ate that. What that also taught them was that mom wasn't kidding, that health and nutrition is super important, and what I feed them is super important for them to eat. It took three years, but Scooter now asks for carrots if we forget to give them to him for lunch. He now asks for spinach leaves so he can have them so he can stay healthy and strong. So that's point number two is what are you giving into? And it might be hard and it might be a crappy next year or two, but you better believe that when my six-year-old scooter who used to sit at this table crying till midnight because I wasn't sure what to do and I just, you couldn't go to bed until you ate something, now asks me for carrots, mom, you forgot to give me my carrots. It's awesome. It's awesome because I didn't give in and give him crap food. You're the parent. Don't say, oh, well, my kid's a picky eater and then tell me that you're giving them crap food. You know, be the parent. They're going to throw a temper tantrum. Sure, I'd rather Scooter have gone through those temper tantrums than have him on the phone crying because he just got diagnosed with diabetes, you know, or something like that. Um, so you need to figure out your priorities and you're the parent and who's running your kitchen. You are the kids. Sorry, just got kind of emotional about that. Um, the third thing is just relating healthy eating. And this goes for you too. And this is why we did you know, talk about why this is important to you. To talk about not getting sick and being healthy, it doesn't mean anything to a kid. I mean, shoot, when you're a kid and you get sick, you have to stay in bed, drink Gatorade, eat ice cream and popsicles and watch TV all day. I mean... Seriously, like that doesn't have any emotional effect on them. But when I started running and Cameron started running and we started taking them with us to our races and, you know, I have people say their kids don't like to run. Find something that they like. If your kid likes to play video games, talk to them about the benefits of eating healthy for video games. Say, you know what? If you like playing video games, you want to make sure your eyesight is awesome and perfect. You know what will help with that? Carrots. If you eat carrots, you'll be a better video game player. You know, I mean, I don't know. It's just tie it to something they can relate to. So our kids don't eat healthy so they can be healthy and strong and not get sick. Our kids eat healthy so they can run fast at their races. They're signed up for all the little kid races after our race. So that's really important to them because they've been, that's an event that they look forward to and they don't want it to be messed up because they didn't eat right. So... Scooter and Andy, that's where we put a video up today on our, um, uh, our force page and those watching this video later on. I'm going to post it for you guys in the group too. Scooter and Andy love to run and that was awesome for us to be able to have that connection um, to eat healthy, to run better. And you run and that also helps you to be able to want to eat healthy too. So find a connection that's important to them, something they love to do, dance, swimming, riding their bikes, and even like I said, playing video games. Carrots will help your eyesight with the vitamin A. And, uh, and relate it to them in a way that they, in their mind, can understand. So those are the tips and tricks to help make this a lifestyle. Include the family. Super proud of you guys. And uh, I just hope that uh, you feel confident in continuing to make this a lifestyle change.